Hi, I'm Dave Ballo of Agilent Technologies Component Test Division, and I'm going to give you a demonstration today of our new embedded LO application. This application runs on our PNA series and PNA X series network analyzers. What we have today is a setup based on the PNA X. Our simulated device under test is a frequency converter which consists of an input amplifier, a mixer, followed by an output filter, and another amplifier. Our input frequency is approximately 18 gigahertz. Our output frequency is at 3.9 gigahertz. Our setup is taking advantage of the built-in second source of the PNAX network analyzer. That second internal source is providing the local oscillator signal right now for the mixer in the dot, as well as for the reference mixer, which is connected over here on the reference loop of the network analyzer. With this setup, we can do fully calibrated measurements of both group delay as well as deviation from linear phase. As we progress through the demo, we'll be using this PSG signal generator as the embedded local oscillator. So we'll substitute this signal for this signal here driving the dot. Before we, we begin our demo, I'll take you through the uh, steps briefly in order to perform a calibration of this measurement. So we will be doing the vector mixer calibration. And it is the analyzer guides you through the steps. It will be a pretty simple calibration using an ECAL module to start off with. So the first step, we'll hook the ECAL module to test port cable 1. The second step, we would hook it to test port 2. And then the third step, in order to complete the unknown through calibration, we need an adapter to be able to connect the two test port cables together. So that would allow us to gather all of our S-parameter error terms at both the input and the output frequency. The next step is to characterize our calibration mixer filter pair. So we do that as a series of reflection measurements. We would hook up our RF of our mixer here. We would hook the local oscillator up here. And our ECAL module then gets connected to the output of the calibration filter. And we would take a series of reflection measurements. At the end of that step, we would have the necessary S parameters of this pair, the calibration mixer filter pair. Then we hook it up as a through device and we're able to then make a transmission measurement and get all the information we need to have a fully corrected frequency translating measurement, giving us the ability to measure both magnitude and phase. Now that we've done the calibration, I've hooked our frequency converter back up again and we're doing a standard VMC measurement of our frequency converter. So again, the local oscillator signals for the dot and the reference mixer are both being provided by the PNAX. So we have phase synchronicity between the reference mixer and the dot. We get some very nice clean traces. Trace one here is the conversion gain of our device. And you can see from the marker over here that we write about 25 dB of gain. Trace 2 is a group delay measurement. This is calibrated group delay. So we're measuring the absolute delay of our converter. We've removed the delay contribution of the reference mixer. And you can see we're right about 21 nanoseconds of delay. We have a little bit of smoothing provide, uh, turned on, one point, about 1.5% one of smoothing, a very modest amount. And we're getting a nice, clean trace. Trace 3 is our phase trace. Normally what we're interested in is deviation from linear phase, so we can remove the phase uh, wrapping here very easily by using our marker function. We can do marker to delay, marker to reference level. Now we can zoom in the phase display here. We're at 10 degrees per division, and you see a nice, clean, stable phase measurement, and we can look at our deviation from linear phase. In this next step of the demo, I'm going to remove the local oscillator signal that's driving the mixer that's being supplied by the PNAX, and I'm going to substitute a local oscillator signal from our 
PSG signal generator. And we'll see that the, the effect that that has on the measurement. So in this step of the demo, the time bases between the two instruments are locked together. So the 10 megahertz out of the PSG is going into the 10 megahertz reference in of the PNAX. So now you can see the effect of substituting a local oscillator that's not phase synchronous with the local oscillator driving the reference mixer. So we have frequency lock here. The two LOs are exactly the same frequency, but you can see now that because we're not ratioing out the phase noise of a common local oscillator, you see that both the phase trace and the group delay trace have gotten considerably more noisy. Notice the amplitude trace has remained exactly the same, so that was unaffected by going to the PSG as the local oscillator signal. The group delay trace uh, is more noisy, again, due to the, we, we're not ratioing out the phase noise, but notice that the average of the signal is still exactly where it was before, shown by the darker blue trace. So with a little more averaging, uh, more smoothing and a little bit of averaging, we can clean up that trace and still make a good measurement. I'll just turn on some more smoothing here. I'll bump it up to about uh, four and a half percent, actually make it say five and a half percent. And you can see now that we're very close back to our original measurement. And if we turned on averaging, we could clean up the noise even further. Notice that the phase trace here is not entirely stable. There's a little bit of up and down movement. The, the uh, absolute phase between the two instruments is shifting a little bit. It's not uh, affecting the group delay measurement hugely, but you can definitely see that even though these instruments have their time bases locked together, there's still some phase slipping going on between the two instruments. Now for this step of the demo where we want a fully embedded local oscillator with no connection, I'm simply going to disconnect the 10 megahertz time base here between the two instruments. So now our PSG is still providing a local oscillator signal to our dot representing an embedded LO, but now we've disconnected the 10 megahertz time base. So there's no connection now at all between the PSG and the PNAX. And this represents really a fully embedded LO application where the oscillator that's inside of our dot, being simulated here, has no connection at all to the measurement system. So now that we've disconnected the time base between the two instruments, we notice that the measurement has, all the measurements have degraded significantly. These uh, traces here are the memory traces of, of the good state when everything was phase synchronous. So here's our orange trace was the magnitude. You see that it's way down here now reading uh, one and a half dB instead of 25 dB. Here's our group delay trace here nice and clean. Here it is now and it's clearly off. It's at 41 nanoseconds instead of being at 20 nanoseconds and you can see our phase trace is also moving around quite a bit. Um, we can expand the scale on the phase trace and you can see that from sweep to sweep it's uh, moving around, it's not at all stable. The situation we have here is that the PSG now is running at a slightly different frequency than where we think it is. We assume it's exactly at 15 gigahertz, but in reality it's a little bit off and we no longer have the time bases tied together, so the PNAX is trying to measure the output of the dot and the frequency, the signal coming out, is actually offset from where we think it is. And that's resulting in the amplitude being way off, the group delay being off, and also moving around, and same, same with the phase. So now, in order to solve this, we're going to use our embedded LO application. So here's the screen. First thing we want to do is to turn it on. And we're going to locate how far off our local oscillator is from where we think it is. So I hit the Find Now button. And we see that our local oscillator is actually about 630 hertz away from where we think it is. And that was causing all the problem. 
What this, the embedded LO application is, does is that for every sweep, it'll actually take some background sweeps and find out what this LO frequency delta is. So this term will get updated at every sweep. In addition, in order to stabilize the phase, we're going to normalize an arbitrary point of the phase trace to the same position on the screen all the time. And that will remove the sweep to sweep phase variation that we get. And in this case, we're going to just normalize the middle point on the screen. So we click OK. And we notice a few things. Notice that our amplitude trace now has returned to the position it's supposed to be in. It lines up exactly over the memory trace. We notice our group delay is still wiggling around. It, it is uh, moving about the correct value, but it's going above and below. That problem is due to the IF bandwidth. When everything is phase synchronous, you want a narrow IF bandwidth to get good noise performance, to minimize the trace noise. However, in an embedded LO measurement, that narrow IF bandwidth is actually causing the measurement uh, to degrade, the group delay measurement, because the frequency instability now is moving on either side of the filter skirt, or the sidebands of the filter. So in order to stabilize the phase and group delay measurement, we need to widen up the IF bandwidth. So I'm going to widen it up to 10 kilohertz. And you see now that we have much less movement in the group delay trace. And you'll notice now that it's much closer to being centered around the correct value that's shown in dark blue. And now, by turning on some channel averaging, we've set it to 10 averages, and I turn it on, now we will see that our group delay trace will average out to the exact correct value as shown by the dark blue trace. And we also notice that our phase trace now is very stable. There is an offset from the original trace because we've picked an arbitrary point to normalize the phase. But you can see that it retains the exact shape as it did before when we were fully synchronous. So in summary, the embedded LO application is doing two things. It's keeping track of the local oscillator offset between what's in our dot and, and where the PNAX is tuning. You can see that going on sweep by sweep in the display down here at the bottom. And it's normalizing the phase trace every sweep, giving a nice, stable phase trace. And the result is that we get a clean, calibrated group delay measurement of a frequency converter with a fully embedded local oscillator.